and I expect now uh, some reaction of uh, the participants. Do you have question on this first uh, question? That is, who is in the driver's seat when it comes to healthcare? Maybe I maybe I, I may comment on on two points that uh, Alexandra made. Uh, well, one of them is the fact that I'm, I'm a great believer, of course, of therapeutic innovation, and, and I've been pushing it all my life. Basically, it's not the only determinant of health. And for instance, if you look at the, at the stomach cancer, the fridge was the best I mean, was the solution which uh, brought an end to stomach cancer, and and, and it was not uh, the, the the pharma industry, but still. A great tribute to the pharma industry indeed. Now, Alexandra mentioned, for instance, antibiotics as having solved issues. If you look at research today, very, very little research is done on antibiotics for uh, just kind, I would say, economic reasons. Because if you if you are a pharma company with kind of obligations to shareholders to uh, to return nice profits, uh, you will never go into that field because you know that. Antibiotics will not be priced at a high level. They are usually used for uh, one week. So that's not a business. And so at the same time where we say there may be very dangerous uh, pathologies, you know, I mean, the next epidemics will maybe not be a viral one, but, but bacterial because there will be a resisting bacteria. And we will be caught because nobody has pushed for research in the antibiotics field. Um, coming to the cost of human life, uh, Alexandra is right in saying that there is a price, but it's not the same for everybody. And if you look at, for instance, the British, the British decided that they would not reimburse drugs if they cost more than 20 to 30,000 pounds per quality adjusted life year. Now, once they've decided this, all the enzyme replacement therapies come, which cost much, much more. And, and the Brits had to create a special envelope, which means that you price the life, of, for instance, of a, uh, of a, of a kid uh, with, uh, with uh, an enzyme deficit much higher than the price of somebody else. So that's really one of the issues that society is facing. And, and, and this debate has not been brought to, to the public. I mean, it's a debate which remains within the hands of a few specialists who debate on what should we reimburse but, but the public is never called to say what they want, what they want. Maybe because the public wants everything. Yeah, <laughs> as we see it in other areas. Uh, but building on this, and uh, before we move to uh, the next thing, I would say both you, uh, Jacques and Alexandre, you, you said, in fact, there is no uh, uh, order giver. Uh, so it, it's a kind of, uh, self-organized uh, industry, I caricature a little bit, uh, that is very dependent from one country to the other. Maybe it's very good because the sensibility to uh, healthcare are very different uh, based on your culture, for sure. So, but we, we understand the, the waste, we understand that's what you stated, we understand that uh, we, we need to do it. Everybody knows it's one of the biggest policy issues for every government. Uh, you call Jack for establishing the matrix. Uh, the, uh, Alexandra, you, you were more on, okay, uh, let's categorize the type of innovation and, and focus on at least three agenda. Uh, uh, but how, how would we start? We know it, it's a very complex challenge. Where do you suggest uh, we should start? Excellent. Well, that's something. quite a complicated <laughs> question. Uh, starting yeah. to organize a world that has I'm never the been... Panelists, uh, the panelists, the participants as well, if they want to contribute, but uh, yeah. Go ahead, Alexander. Um, well, I think I would agree uh, with Jack Bue on that. Uh, there is no point in trying to organize when you don't know what you're trying uh, to organize. And today, uh, today we don't know. We only know that it is the law of the market that more or less in the end uh, regulates the whole, uh, the whole industry and that's exactly what happens for antibiotics. So yeah, perhaps um, I would say 
organizing, giving some metrics so that we have something like a clear understanding of what it's going on. And I would add to that also perhaps having a clear view of what we can do. Jack? Yeah, what's interesting is if you look, OECD just published a very interesting report, uh, Health at a Glance, where they provide indicators of uh, performance of various healthcare systems on a number of indicators. And it's extremely strange to see that performances are extremely different from one country to the other. And that a country, and so countries have set some kind of priorities, but it's unclear whether this was, uh, I, was uh, I would say, an explicit decision or whether it's just because there was a kind of a, a drift of the whole system in that direction. And my point is that basically we need to develop research, I said, in, in epidemiology and health economics, but also education and probably educate the public. I, the, the, pre, the preceding panel talked a lot about disinformation. And I think that's a field where people really don't understand the, the basics of the economy. Uh, they don't know how many drugs are in development. They don't know what the budget, which budget is allocated. They don't realize that resources are scarce and we would need more public debate, both I would say at the world level, WHO does, does a great job of collecting data and uh, fostering specific, uh, specific plans. But I mean, Alexander mentioned uh, malaria, and uh, and that's that's a really good question. How comes that with all? I mean, maybe more money is needed for uh, you know, but malaria kills more people than uh, than COVID. So uh, why is it that there hasn't been a big effort on malaria except the Billion Million Decades Foundation, and uh, and with the limited outcome that Alexander mentioned? So. Where, where should this debate take place? Well, first of all, in, in countries at, at parliamentary level, probably, uh, and then this would need an education of, uh, of politicians. And, uh, and then probably a multilateral discussion, you know, there was a big progress. I mean, what we see with vaccines is that the COVID vaccine will come all over the world. And that's the basic, the, the outcome of a work which was done 20 to 30 years ago, I was very young at that time, which was called ICH, uh, International Conferences on, on Harmonization, where all administrations work together and together with industry to define what would be expected to uh, register a new drug. This is why today you can register a new drug all over the world at the same time. And, and we need more consultation like that on, on what are the big issues in terms of health, uh, also at the international level. And that's why I think the uh, initiative of Thierry is so important and why we need to push it through the next uh, uh, World Policy Conference. Okay. So, yep, yeah, thank you. Um, I see one comment from Stanislas on uh, the... the the cost of life, uh, uh, and I think it's uh, that leads to the, the next debate. I think if I would retain, and I don't intend to summarize to be clear, but to retain one idea, I think what I hear is that you say basically we lack transparency as well in the way this market is operating. Uh, the fact that uh, there is not a clear uh, uh, order giver is, is a, of course, the, the initial sin, but uh, the lack of transparency and uh, possibly, as Alexandra alluded to, uh, some topics, and we've seen it probably during the last COVID crisis, that are difficult to expose in today's society, where they are not welcome as part of the conversation as they might have been before, but to be the point on uh, the cost of life and the necessary sometimes to make choices and they ha happen or tend to happen more randomly. 